Hi, and welcome to C Programming Skills Using Replit. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. Here we're going to focus on writing a program that converts miles to kilometers. And we're going to do it different ways. We'll break this video up into multiple parts. Our first part, we're going to use the miles, set it as a variable, and convert it to kilometers. So that'll be our, our first version. Our second version will actually prompt the user from the console to enter the miles and then we'll convert. And then the third version will prompt for miles only if the user has not entered the value on the console. So let's get started on version one. Okay, so here we are for version one. We start as always with our Hello World application. But in this case, we want to convert miles to kilometers. And in fact, I'm going to kind of uh, I'm going to sketch out by using comments what it is we want to do here. Uh, so I'm going to say, first, let's uh, display title and version info. So we're going to do that first. Then we want to get the inputs. We want to uh, make the calculation and finally we want to display results. Now when you're writing code this this concept of you first at a high level state what it is you want to do and, and many times, you may need to do this multiple times, you'll keep refining it. It's called top-down refinement or stepwise refinement, where step-by-step step you refine what it is you're going to do. And only when you fully understand what it is you're ready to do, then you can write the code. So in this case, display the title and version info. Maybe we'll do this. We'll say miles to uh, KMS program. And maybe we'll say version 1. And thinking about it, why don't we use our put string? We'll say code by, and I'm going to put my name, or, or I'll do this. I'll say you should, as you're following along, your name here. So put your, your name there. So, for example, I would say code by Norman McIntyre. But you put your name, don't put mine. And that takes care of that first part, display the title version and also the code by. So if I click on run, I've got that part taken care of. Okay, next step, we need to get the inputs. Well, we talked about in the previous video how you have boxes called variables. And as you can guess, we need a variable called miles. So that's going to be the name of it. But this particular variable, we're going to make it a double. Now this is something new. We haven't seen a double. Um, in fact, let's review. What we've seen is an integer. In fact, maybe we'll do it like this. What we've seen so far is integers. Now an integer, 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 42. Integers are whole numbers. There's no decimal place after it. Well, when you think about miles, when you're entering this, certainly you, you may want to say, I drove uh, five miles, right? You may want to do that. However, wonder if you drove 5.5 miles. Then we've got an issue because, in fact, we're seeing it here, implicit conversion from double to int. So right away it's telling us this value this 5.5 cannot be stored in an int. Why? Because it only stores the, the whole number part. It doesn't store this decimal part. So the way we get around that, in fact, you can see the hint here says it's implicit conversion. Well, what we need to make this is a double. So double. So this allows us to enter our miles. Well, that's, that's the input. 
Now we need to make the calculation. So we could say, well, we're going to start with miles. We know the, the answer, I'll say KMS for kilometers. We know that's going to be the answer. But how do we go from miles to kilometers? And the answer is there's a conversion factor of, of how many kilometers per mile. And in fact, that conversion factor, we could say, since that is something that does not change, in other words, unlike this KMS and unlike this miles, which are variables that will change, the conversion factor does not change. It's always the same. When you have something that never changes, that is, it's always the same, sometimes we refer to it as a constant, right, a constant. Then you do pound define, give the name of the constant, so I'm going to call this one, how about KMS per mile, and you give what that constant is, when this case is 1.6. So that's our conversion factor. Now, no semicolon after this, because remember we said in our previous video, anything that begins with a pound sign is handled by the preprocessor. And what this is doing is saying, this name is going to have this value. So what this means, we could come down here, and when it says make the calculation, we could say KMS equals, take the miles, multiply it, by KMS per mile. KMS per mile. Notice how nicely this is coming together. And, and every now and then, click on Run, just to make sure you don't have any syntax errors. Right, it's always a good idea to, to see that everything's working. Okay, for example, uh, when you're first starting coding, it's very easy to leave off a semicolon, right, so now we've got an error, so you'd go to line 17, here's line 17, it's even given us the red here, saying it expected the semicolon, and finally display the results, print F, we'll say KMS, or we'll say, oh yeah, KMS is, and we've been using a percent %D because we've printed out a decimal value, an integer. Here we're going to do percent %f for floating point. In other words, this double is also referred to as a floating point value. And we'll say print out KMS. And that's our program. So if we run this, we see we run it and it it goes through our conversion. It says miles are 5.5. Here's our conversion. And notice we've got KMS, in this case, of 8.8. .8. Of course, if we wanted to change it, suppose you drove 100 miles. You could just edit it right here, click on Run, and now we've got 100 miles is 160 kilometers. So we can just change it as needed, right? Maybe we say 10. Click on Run. So this is the first version of our program. And as always, make sure you've written the code, run it just like we're doing here. And then once you get this version going, in the next video, we'll convert this to version 2, which will actually ask the user to enter the miles. So here, instead of having it where we have to change our source code every time. The next version is we're going to ask the user. But again, before you move on to the first, the next video, make sure you have this running. So thanks for making it this far. There's more to come in the next video. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks for watching.